Hello, peoples of the internet. My name is Sadie, and I am obsessed with the app called Visco. You guys have probably heard of it. You guys have probably used it, and it's probably part of your everyday Visco girl lives, isn't it? I'm going to be giving you guys like a little rundown of how I like to use Visco and edit my photos because like 90% of the stuff that you see on my story and 60% of my Instagram photos are edited with Visco, and then the other half are edited with Lightroom with the Aspen Ovard preset. Sets. I made a video before on how I edit my photos with the Aspen Ovard one, so I'll put that in a card up here. But this video is solely for Visco because I know that those presets cost money and a Lightroom subscription costs money. I do actually have the Visco subscription, which gives you like a lot more filters, but a filter that I use really often is actually one that you don't have to pay for. So if you guys want to see how I edit different types of photos on Visco, then keep on watching. <laughs> Oh, if you guys want to follow me on Visco, my username is Sadie A. Aldis. A is like the first letter of my middle name. It's really confusing, I know. Sadie Aldis was taken. I don't know why. So that's like the type of pictures that I like to post and put on my story and stuff. I always post like extra photos on Visco. I use it a lot just to mostly edit my Instagram story photos, but also my actual Instagram posts. So I'm going to show you guys how I would edit a simple photo like this. As you guys can see, my Instagram is kind of brighter, like it has more vibrant colors and I don't like to include many like brick walls or just like browns or blacks because I like it to be pretty bright. So this photo is a typical photo that I would definitely take. It has some green, blue, pink, white, some contrast with the black and I really like it. First, I will go automatically to my favorites. All my favorites are C1, E1, E3, C9, C7, E2, G6, O6, P5, O2, B1, and B4. And the ones that I usually use on this type of regular photo is C1, E1, C7, or G6. But they just give me like the most vibrant colors and kind of the look that I'm going for. For this one, I would use a filter G6 and I usually just leave it like fully up. I will always make the picture slightly, slightly brighter and I will always sharpen it. I feel like it makes your photos look really fake when you sharpen it too much. So just sharpening it a little bit makes it look a little bit fresher, I don't know. I always turn up the saturation, maybe to like 0.3, but not too much because I actually go deeper into like the color HSL section afterwards. And I will always turn the highlights down because I feel like when you turn the exposure up, it makes your face a lot lighter and your skin just in general and the sky gets really white. So if you like turn it down a bit, then it just makes it look more natural. I always turn the shadows up because I don't want there to be a lot of dark colors in the photo. I wanna keep it pretty bright. So I will usually do do the exact same amount that I put the highlights up, I'll do the exact same amount for the shadows. This picture is becoming very orange and I don't like my pictures to be too warm toned. I like it somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna turn this down to maybe that. And I also like my pictures to have a more pink hue than a green hue. So I'll just turn it up like 0.1. Then I will scroll all the way over to HSL. And this is where we get a little bit technical and if you don't have Visco Premium, then just skip this part, it looks fine right now. But what I like to do is I like to turn down, actually, okay. In this photo, I actually look pretty tan. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. But if I, if the brightness of the photo took away my tan, then I will bump the saturation up and I will bump the lightness down. Sometimes say I wanted mm, the leaves to pop more, I would turn the saturation up and the luminance down. My skirt is a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna turn that down and I'm gonna make it a lighter blue. And that is what I would do to this photo. Here is the before and after, just brighter colors. And I don't know, just enhance the photo. I love photo editing guys. Like, I am so excited when I get to edit photos. That would be an Instagram post for me, but for my Instagram stories, such as this one, where I got a bunch of cases sent to me from Velvet Caviar, uh, yep. I would say 90% of the time I use the filter C1, very basic. It makes the color stand out so well and it just automatically makes your photo look way artsier than it actually is. This one, I did use C1 as well, so I'll just go one, turn it down a bit, and then I'll make it a little bit brighter with the exposure. That made the highlights a little too much, so I will turn it down, turn the shadows down, saturation. <laughs> it's kind of a little bit blurry, so I'm gonna sharpen it a bit. 
and that's how I edit that photo just see one that was on my story too so that's how I edit those types of photos this go becomes really glitchy for me after like five minutes of using it does that happen to anyone else or is it just my phone now we're going to move on to a photo that doesn't have the best lighting and I'm going to show you my tips and tricks on how to make it look the best you can this is a photo that I actually haven't posted but it is on my story so it is a very dark photo which I don't appreciate on my feed but for stories I don't care if they're dark so I kind of work with the shadows and accept the shadows for where they want to be I used the filter c7 which makes you look so tan so if you want to look tan use c7 I turned it down just a little bit just the color grading in the c filters is so good I'm actually gonna turn the exposure down on this one like to maybe point to really make it look like it was meant to have bad lighting like it was meant to be dark I'll sharpen it a bit turn the highlights down a bit and the shadows down a lot because they're trying to get rid of the shadows it is a very very yellow photo I'm going to turn the temperature down a lot and I'm going to make it slightly more pink hued is hued even a word well I just used it lastly I will adjust the colors so let's do this tan who needs to lie in the Sun when you have this go and make my pants a little brighter and that my friends is how I would edit this photo which used to be very dark and weird looking and now it looks pretty cute sometimes the sea Filters can be very overpowering and very obvious that you used a filter So for one like this where I'm not wearing any makeup It's just a chill outfit and you just want it to look like oh, it's a candid and I haven't even edited yet This is what I would do So I find that the E filters are way more natural than the C filters. Is that just my opinion? I don't know. Also, the G6 filter is really natural. For this photo, I would use the G6 filter. It's really similar to the E ones. I would turn it down a lot, like maybe just that. The lighting is already perfect in this one, so I wouldn't touch it. I would bump up the sharpness a little bit. I would also bump up the saturation a tiny bit. And highlights, I'm gonna turn down because the background is a little bit too white. See that shadow that's like under my hat right there? Whenever you're wearing hats, you always wanna bump the shadows up or down I don't really know it's going that way but like it's making it less so I don't know how to explain it now I'm going to make it a little bit of a pink hue if your skin is looking a bit too yellow then you can just push the hue over to the orange if you want to look a little bit more tan we can also do that that's also something we can do for some reason this filter makes the grays look blue turn the lightness up and the saturation for blue down and now my shirt looks the way it's supposed to and that is how I would edit a photo it looks super natural but it just makes the colors look so much better and sometimes honestly I try to get a little bit funky with my editing and explore some other filters so I always go to the for this photo and I look and see what they have to offer I think it's a really cool idea for Visco to have like it just lets you explore the endless possibilities of filters. For example, I was looking through my favorites and I couldn't really find one that fit the photo well. So I just went to For This Photo and tried it out and I was like, oh, I like this one. Take you. Okay. The English. And I get a lot of questions on my Instagram asking how I make those little stop motion videos. And I thought that everyone would know about this, but apparently not everyone does. So I use the disco feature in Visco and how you do that is you just go to the middle button, press the top left camera thing and it makes a little stop motion video. My favorite filters to use on Visco Disco are A6, C1 and G3. This one is made with C1 because I thought the colors and like our bracelets would pop. I don't know. It honestly just depends on the visco that I'm making. This one had a lot of shadows in it, so I used G6. I switch it up a lot. But yeah, that is how I edit on visco. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you have any more questions for me or like editing, Instagram tips, anything like that, comment them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And once again, my visco is Sadie A. Aldis and my Instagram is Sadie Aldis. And I love talking to you guys on there. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.